So the Seattle expansion draft finally came and went. It wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be as far as, I mean, there weren't a lot of huge names taken, but I think it was just interesting as far as like the business perspective of it, how the pandemic has kind of forced this sort of scenario to play out, as in a lot of teams were just throwing their, their big players out there and seeing if Seattle would pick up those big contracts and get them off the books for them. So we saw Francis didn't really bite. He didn't bite on the price, the Duchesne, Tarasenko contracts that were, that were out there and available. It's a very different expansion draft, I think, looking at it as opposed to Vegas, because now that I'm taking all this in, I mean, I, I personally don't see a big player that really stands out. They did get Giordano, which we'll talk about, but I didn't really see a player that if I were to look at them on a roster or just throughout the league, uh, stacked up against their peers, and I wouldn't say, oh my gosh, that's a star. That's a, that's a face of a franchise right there. Like, I wouldn't say that. But with that being said, I'm just going to go through and kind of dissect some of these names that were taken and just give my thoughts and perspective a little bit on them. So the first big selection, or I guess sort of big as I sort of preface to, was Mark Giordano. And he's, as he carries a $6.75 million cap hit, I thought it was really cool personally because, I mean, he was undrafted. So uh, I think it was kind of surreal for him and, and probably emotional a little bit actually being drafted and getting to be because he probably thought he would never be drafted ever. That was a neat moment, but I definitely think he's, he's going to be the captain. I think that Francis looked at him as being, I guess, the big ticket as far as all the players that he was going to select and sort of the guy that will be the most valuable as far as the leadership and the experience. He may not be a headman or a betrangelo or a top tier defenseman, but I think that he's definitely going to make an impact uh, regardless. And Calgary did not want to let go of him. As far as I know, they were trying to negotiate, but Seattle was asking too steep of a price, a first and a third round pick. So it, it's definitely going to be pretty neat to see Giordano lead this team as well. Next player to go over was Adam Larson, which he was actually UFA coming in. Uh, it's It's been well known that Larson probably wasn't going to be able to come back to Edmonton, that he was looking elsewhere, wanting to hit free agency. Ken Holland, he, he spoke about this. He wasn't shy about it. The Oilers, when they when they got Duncan Keith, he was looked at to possibly be a partner for Larson, but obviously that's not going to happen. So I think the Oilers are really going to be focusing heavily on landing a top tier defenseman. I mean, regardless of who that'll be, it could be Hamilton, Jones, they're going to be really pursuing a top tier defenseman in my opinion or they at least should be because I mean there's uncertainty about Clef Bomb. they traded away Caleb Jones and now Duncan Keith and there's not a lot of certainty around him so as being you know able to to play top minutes right now they're probably going to put him in a probably a second pairing role so definitely something to look at as far as Edmonton's concerned. New York Islanders, for me being a Pens fan personally, this one was very nice to see because Jordan Everly is known as the Penguin Killer. Coming in at having a $5.5 million cap hit, he's going to, similarly to Giordano, I think bring in an element of experience and leadership, but he's also going to be their goal scorer. If they don't get anyone else, I feel like this is going to be his main role because he's known as just having a ridiculous shot, being able to get open and find the open ice. And, you know, he recorded 34 goals before an Edmonton. So, I mean, we know that he can do it. He's hit the 20 goal mark six times in his career, which is pretty impressive. So I feel like he'll probably be, yeah, on the first line for sure. He should be at least because, I mean, like I said, they don't have a lot of players that just stand out as being, well, for one, a, like a star player, but also a pure goal scorer, other than Eberle, in my opinion, that can play on the first line. So, moving down, um, speaking about Pittsburgh, yeah, Brandon Tanev, we all pretty much knew that he was going to be going. I would have preferred Zucker going myself, as Zucker has not produced as of late. He had a, a rough season, and, and I think that we're going to be trying to move on from him regardless, but it would have been nice just to kind of have that contract picked up and not really have to give anything away for it. But Brandon Tanev, so what do you get from Brandon Tanev? Well, if you look at his, not mugshot, but headshot, you can kind of pick up on this guy that he's got a lot of energy. He's, he's a restless guy. I mean, come on, this guy literally drinks Red Bulls on his way out to the ice, okay? He, he's, he's got so much energy to give. He's a very intense player, kind of like what we had in Hornquist, but he's um, also just insane on the forecheck. 
Tech. He is a four checking machine, therefore he's going to be great on their PK. He's very physical. Uh, he's a great two-way player. He's great on both ends of the ice and great at board battles. So those are a lot of things that I think that they're going to get from him. I mean, I know him as a player, probably him and McCann, I know them the best out of all these players. So I could definitely say that he's going to bring an edge to the team. Anyways, uh, going down, Vince Dunn was an RFA. They took him in from St. Louis. And I think if it wasn't Tarasenko, I mean, people pretty much knew it was going to be Vince Dunn because he's really a steal, in my opinion. And it was it was a steal. I mean, he's a young guy that's got Stanley Cup experience. Uh, I think he could be a core player for the team moving forward. I think he's going to be one of those guys that they're probably going to want to keep around. He had nine points last year on the power play, so he could be one of those guys that helps quarterback the power play. So moving right along, the next one was Yannick Ward. And I mean, a lot of people will see this and they'll be like, oh my gosh, like no first line center. He's not. No way. I think that, I mean, if you take in context that he was playing on the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, and they there were players, I mean, like Sorelli and Stamkos and, um, you know, Point and other just loaded with forward talent. I mean, this is really why he got selected because Tampa just had so much forward talent that I think that he's really going to maybe surprise some people. This guy is capable of playing a top six role. I think really in the playoffs, I mean, he was pretty much uh, the second line center at times and performed really well. He did really well against a lot of top players. So even though I mean, looks like, you know, this was I, I guess maybe a bad move. Third line center, $5.17 million cap hit, but in all actuality, I think it's it's gonna be what uh, Francis probably needs. I don't think that he's done with moves, but I'll get to that later. If we look at the points, 36 points in 56 games played, averaging 17 minutes. So yeah, don't overreact with this guy. I think he's gonna be just fine. And moving right along, Jared McCann. It, it, it wasn't easy to see Tanev go as a Penguins fan, but I think to me, People might feel differently, but Jerry McCann hurt more because to me, I feel like he was more of the bang for the buck. I mean, he can play center. He can play wing. He's very good on uh, both sides of the ice as well. He's not as, as physical as Tanev. He's not as intense as Tanev, but he's got a lethal shot. And you can't really teach natural goal scoring. That's one thing that you just can't really teach and he has it. Uh, he had the most power play goals in Pittsburgh last season with seven. Honestly, he would, if it was any other team, in my opinion, I mean, besides maybe like Tampa or Pittsburgh or, or one of those teams that's like really heavy on the forwards, I think McCann would be perfect as a second line center. Like I, I really do watching him. I feel like he's, I mean, $2.94 million cap hit, um, second line center. I mean, come on, like knowing what he can bring, I feel like as far as all these players that were selected, I mean, I could be biased, but in my opinion, I feel like he was really the, the best value as far as everything that he can bring. Definitely going to be interesting moving forward because I think that this really says to me anyways, I mean, Seattle has over 20, I think it's around 28 million still in cap so they're not done i don't i really don't think they're done i think a lot of people might look at this and say oh my gosh like what was going on in this guy's mind you know was he was he under the influence when he put this roster together what's going on i think that in this situation and given the way that it kind of played out um because there were a lot of teams that put their players with bad contracts ex um, they, they had them exposed so in order to kind of save the the more value players so how do you work around that well do like this um, you take players that might not necessarily bring in a huge return but I mean if you if you give enough you're gonna get um, a star player so I think it's just kind of, of schematics of things I don't think that the Francis is done I think that there's more playing behind the scenes and I think we're gonna see more moves made around the draft um, and also in free agency from him. So yeah, uh, if you're a Kraken fan, I wouldn't panic just yet and um, and, and fly off the handle and, and think your team's gonna be terrible. I don't think they're gonna be a Vegas, but I don't think they're gonna be terrible. I think they're gonna be pretty competitive. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, yeah, let's go Kraken.